Oh shit. Oh, I got a Zugtas. Mmm. I could probably try to go for a Shadow Zug run. I know y'all want to see. Still need the pet though, so I really should be doing some Zugtas, but I'm just so lazy. I know y'all want to see this Shadow being used everywhere. So I try my best to test the Shadow at a bunch of places I thought had potential. So let's get into the fun one first, which is Zuck. Then I'll cover the Shadow uses that directly benefit me on my collection log grinds that I found to be really good. And I will then show you the rest of the places I found the Shadow to be really good at. Let's just say there's a lot of goddamn places the Shadow's stupidly good at. If you're excited for this crazy progress-filled and knowledge-packed video featuring the Tumikin Shadow, definitely let me know by liking this video and subscribing for future fun progress and testing. It took a lot of effort and time, so sit back and enjoy this video. Alright, I think this is what I'm gonna try out with here. Over for Killing stragglers faster. Mage attack travel distance takes too long. I might not even use it to be honest. I don't know. This this is experimental. So right off the bat, the shadow did not have any issues, of course, hitting things like the nibblers or the bats. But when the blobs start showing up, I did notice I do splash a little bit. I probably have like a pretty high hit rate, but it's not like insanely insane accurate. Pretty accurate though. Shadow will have no problem killing these guys. I, I know that for sure. Oh, wow. I actually splashed. What the hell? Okay. I probably should keep uh, Augury on for these guys. Then. Here's some basic information about the Shadow that everybody should know. So the Shadow is like a trident in terms of having its own built-in spell or a saying even. But the damage that you get from the Shadow is heavily dependent on what you are wearing. Because it will triple the accuracy of your magic gear and triple the magic percent damage of your magic gear. So if you do have like really really bad magic gear like Mystics, you're definitely going to notice the Shadow not performing as much because you're not getting that many max hits and your accuracy is a lot lower. But if you bring something like Ancestral, the best of the best, which is what I'm wearing, you will definitely see the Shadow being a lot stronger. So you definitely want that magic percent and uh, to an extent magic accuracy of course. The Shadow definitely doesn't have too much of an issue hitting pretty well on the minions, even on the major. And keep in mind, I am on Slayer Task, so I probably would splash quite a bit more if I was not. Ugh, damn, this sucks. Oh. Good thing I wore my Torva. <laughs> Alright, this is where there's an issue. Definitely having a bit of an issue with that. Because unfortunately, that was a really bad spawn, but yeah, I, th I think you definitely want to have at least some melee gear going into this. Because I probably would have died if I uh, didn't have Bandos or Torva on me there. So the Shadow was doing pretty good on Jads as well. Now the real question is, how does the Shadow perform on Zuck? Because I kind of figured being on Tass and all and the Shadow being such a crazy accuracy weapon, I figured it wouldn't have too much of an issue. So let's find out how Zuck is. Yes! Oh my god, that was so fucking good. Woo! I still got it, boys. I haven't done this in a while, but I still managed to flick it. Oh, okay. Alright, now we're gonna push the boss. See if we can uh, get only one set of minions. Probably not, because I'm splashing so much right now. Jesus, I am splashing so much. So, I did manage to complete the Inferno attempt with basically full magic using the shadow as my main weapon and i gotta say it is significantly harder than just doing inferno the normal way which is with a range setup and also dps wise it just felt like i was using a fardenin bow the crystal bow right which is like your second best option i also have a t-bow so you might as well just buy an f-bow and just do zuck that way it's probably easier and similar dps so i don't really recommend the shadow it was interesting because everybody wants to know and me included wanted to know but I would not recommend it. It's doable, but not for first time capers, that's for sure. Oh! Oh my god, the flicking game, boys. Oh, okay, we're good. Fucking hell. Okay, this is way harder than a Tebow. Never doing that again. Never doing this again. Holy. 
Clear? Woo! Damn, that was hard, boys. Oh my god. I haven't done a two, two minion set in a while. Out of all the things that I've tested the shower with, the Infernal's probably the only one that disappointed me. Everything else that I've tested, oh my god, the shadow is so good, so look forward to it. So it is time to cover some of the progress I've been up to lately, but at the same time, also review the shadow at those places I've been using for my progress. Of course, TOA is the biggest place you want to use the shadow app because it has a 4 times multiplier for accuracy and magic damage. Unlike outside, right, which is 3x, but yeah, that makes it so, so strong. It is basically the most useful weapon at TOA outside of the Fang, so definitely get it for TOA if you can afford. Yo, I think it's yours, or is it mine? Oh, it's mine? What? No way. I probably should go drive for an entire month, but we're back. <laughs> we're back. Here you go. Split time. Right? Oh, oh! I like dupes. Dupes are cool. Like, first dupe is sick. Oh, that's sick. Missouri chaps. Yeah, let's go. All right. Well, I got to give my friend like 65 mil. Oh, and I know you don't want it, but it'd be nice. Oh, you know, it. Just, yeah. Oh my god, that's like the 10th ring or something. I think it's my 10th. Uh, let's confirm this. It is my 10th one. Yep, last item that we need is uh, the body, but figured probably not gonna happen too early. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, another ward, boys. I've been working on trying to fill the barrels lock, and we all know since the dawn of time that magic is the way to go at barrels and of course why not use the best magic staff at barrels it's so freaking good i've definitely noticed i get at least an extra run or two an hour and the shadow just occasionally two shots the barrels bros overkill as hell but yeah it's definitely best in slot here no doubt wow what is this 2007 setup though holy this man with the Slayer Staff, holy, the new and the old, you know, that is true old school. Oh, Dark's Great Axe, oh, it's a dupe, ah, it's a dupe, at least we got two items today though, so. Good thing Barrows is giving me a ton of Chaos Runes because I've been using the Shadow so much that Pretty soon, I probably have to buy some, but I've been doing a lot of barrels for the collection log, and yeah, you just get so much chaos runes. Oh, that's pretty sick. If I use the door to skip the first puzzle room, the second set of the puzzle room door, it's completely free. Oh, yes, let's go. Unique item, air staff. The only time I've ever been happy about a, about a freaking uh, air staff. Let's get it, let's get it. That brings us to five items left. There we go. All of Aram's is filled. Thank goodness. Oh, Carol's though. Oof, that's tough. Two items. One, two, three, four. So I've been doing Nightmare on the side for the collection log as well, since we need a few items there. And the Shadow is beyond the shadow of a doubt. The best magic weapon here. Oh my god, I love Nightmare so much more because of the Shadow's ability to two-shot the pillars quite often. It can hit like 120 auto damage just because, yeah, the base damage is like in the 60s and on pillars is two times the damage. So, yeah, just crazy. 200 XP drop. I already know that next hit's probably gonna basically uh, charge the pillar up in two shots. And overall, I've been saving at least 30 seconds to a minute per fight with the shadow over my other weapons. Wow, that was so fast. Holy shit. Oh, wow, what is that hit? 120. Damn, that's close to the max. Wow, that was so fast. Holy shit. 550 KC at this boss. I guess we are going to slowly get to a thousand here. Holy shit, that's gotta be like a PB, man, honestly. Hopefully. Yep, 655. Nice. I went hard though, I used the scythe and everything there. 
Oh, Elite Clue Scroll. Whoa, another sub seven. Holy shit. This one was just me doing it normally. Huh. Oh, whoa. In Inquisitor's Great Helm. What? I haven't seen. Whoa. Oh, man. It was, it's uh, unfortunately not a new item, though. Wow, uh, that's cool. <laughs> that was unfortunate. Good thing I have my redemption on. Or I would have died. Oh, I got it. Yo, parasitic egg. Let's go. No way. Hell yeah, dude. Ooh, collection lock slots today. Wow. I don't have the pets. And Jagex, you owe me the goddamn pet, you know? So I did 1,400 soul nightmares. And then they changed the pet rate to solo nightmares to 1 in 400. I'm so glad they put a fairy ring here because usually you got to run all the way around to do this step. Probably. Yes. A easy collection log. We got the bucket helm classic. So I guess they made it so that there's at least one broken lamp per world. And the rune light's going to tell you where it is. Oh, yes. Yo, these barrels giving me hella late. Looks nice. Oh, it is. Sick. Completely new item. Wow. Not even a dupe. Oh, Lava Ken Scarf. Let's go. We got another unique item. Yo, these elite clues are actually fun to do right now. Oh, that looks cool, honestly. That looks pretty sick. Oh, here we go. Nice. Starting off the day with another collection line. Classic Zamrak play body. This used to be the free to play uh, end game. There you go, first one. Oh, dude, collection lot. Wow, what? Two of them. Damn, that's I'm hooked, man. Collection log definitely makes me want to do clues. Oh, 400 hard clues though. That's pretty nice. Here we go. Oh, briefcase. Another slot. Wow. I mean. This is a value pack. It's like opening like two packs of Yu-Gi-Oh cards and getting two ultra rares, you know? Insane, dude. If you know, you know. I went on an insane rampage with the shadow, so you're going to see a ton of different places that I use the shadow on. But I'll try to be quick with some of the lesser important ones, like this Mythal Dragon here. Shadow is amazing at Mythal Dragons. Actually better than even the Fang and the Lance. Up to you whether or not you want to waste charges here if you're really rich or have a lot of charges go ahead because it's definitely a lot faster than anything else you definitely can't have a proper review of the shadow without covering chambers of Xerix with the shadow the shadow is such a big upgrade at chambers of Xerix at various bosses like vanguards vespula ohm that your times are gonna go down a ton just by having this weapon here so let's talk about the various bosses where the shadow will pulverize when it comes to chambers. So vanguards, it pulverizes the melee vanguard for sure. But it's also pretty decent on the major as well. Especially if you're overloaded. I don't recommend just camping mage the whole time. But let's just say you know it's going to dive really quick. And you don't have time to switch to like hit the major for example. Then the shadow will probably land a hit on the major as well before it dives. But definitely focus shadow on the mega guy. Uh, you might have to worry about resetting though. Not gonna lie. But it's usually worth it. So don't worry about it too much. You can brew down on purpose if you want. The shadow is actually best in slot on the skeletons over the Tebow. Not gonna lie. It's actually so goddamn strong. You don't even bring a salve anymore with the shadow. Which is nice because you save inventory space. The shadow is also best in slot at Fispula as well. Even better than the Tebow at the portal. So definitely use that as well. It's crazy, man. This is not even the end of its uses. We still have more to go. The shadow is also really good at Ice Demon and the Agility Room as well. It's definitely not the best there like Tebow for the Agility Room and Blowpipe. It's still the king there. And, of course, like Fire Surge, Ice Demon, things like that still better. But, hey, those items, sometimes you don't have it. And if you have a Shadow, it'll cover these rooms nicely. And, of course, the Shadow is a powerhouse at Ohm as well on the Mei Chan. It is significantly better than all the previous weapons that we use, like the Sang. By quite a lot. Like, a lot of my Ohm kills 
is now in the range of around nine minutes and that's me not even utilizing the shadow at its highest capacity i am definitely missing hits because if you want to use the shadow uh, in a solo and not miss hits you have to learn a very specific running method that is way more complicated than normal mage running so because i haven't learned it i can't uh show you guys but even without it i was still saving probably a whole minute at home just because i have the shadow so i'll probably save even more time if i uh, learn that method damn that was crazy though just a normal raid with a thieving room and it's still like 21 minutes our fastest raid was 1844 on a pretty normal raid too but yeah what was the own time here we got eight minutes and 18 seconds though holy shit dude. it's crazy yeah, the staff this time for sure saved a lot because I was able to just max DPS most of it there. 818. I think the slowest we had was around 9 minutes. Back in my day, if you could do a 10 minute ohm, that was already considered fast. So this is actually insane. Let's talk about Shadow at Zora. It is so amazing at Zora because it is so noticeable, especially on the red face. Even with the best magic gear pre toa update you would still splash a lot on the melee phase even though it's weak to melee it's very resistant to magic but the shadow is so goddamn accurate three times more accurate than your typical next best magic weapon which was like the sang and the harm staff that you actually don't miss that much on the melee phase so you just save so much time alone due to the melee phase and it smacks the green phase like crazy as usual so yeah, I've got a lot of kills in under a minute, and most of the kills are honestly in the low one minute range now, if I do the full sweaty hybrid setup with range and mage. So on my first try, I was able to get 35 kills an hour using a hybrid setup with the shadow. You can probably get like 40 kills an hour if you were even sweatier, like using a teleport every kill and things like that. I definitely say this is a pretty realistic kills per hour for most people that have this kind of gear that's the third one fourth one i think in uh 24 kills it's so good this setup is disgusting guys holy moly it's so busted and i know a lot of people like to do more chill methods at zora such as range only with the f bow or t bow so a lot of you guys might be asking what about mage only with the shadow i went ahead and did that test for you guys it was still actually quite good i was still getting around 33 kills an hour so it was a significantly slower per hour but at the end of the day you're still getting 30 plus kills an hour with mage only so it's still quite viable you will splash along the mage phase but it's not a big deal next place i went to was kraken the shadow definitely did kraken dirty because i was getting up to 90 kills an hour versus like the 70 80 kills an hour i would do with a trident or a saying again it is a bit overkill to use the shadow here but if you are rich go ahead you know it's a lot faster only downside is though you don't get to heal as much because unlike the saying there's no healing so i recommend you bring uh, a saying as a backup or bring more food otherwise you will have to make a bit more often i also recommend a blowpipe spec too if you have that that helps a bit too yo 12 second kill new pb bro <laughs> i also got a new pb at kraken holy shit this is insane so the Abyssal Siren boss was totally not on my radar, but I just had to give it a go when I saw the Abyssal Demon Task. And honestly, it worked so freaking good. I was getting 30 kills an hour my first try. It took a lot for me to get 30 kills an hour with melee only, so it's fair to say Shadow is probably one of the best. Probably like top two, maybe the best against Sire. So it's actually super good. There is some iffy parts about it. It's mainly just the last phase because you're wearing... Magic gear, your defense is pretty much non-existent, so the Skeons will do a lot of damage to you. But you can just Blood Barrage them when you get a good clump and heal back really fast. And also you can do a Phantom Barrage as the XP drop you know would kill the boss is happening. You can also just cast a Blood Barrage on the Skeons then as the Shadow Attack takes a while to actually reach the boss at times. So you can get a free heal and the boss will die and you will probably have 4 HP that way too. But yeah, it does great on the vents, it does great on the boss. Just make sure you are healing appropriately on the last phase with Blood Rush. And it's really, really good.
Another amazing place to use the shout at is at the Smoke Devil boss because it just pummels that guy. And you can also freeze the boss at the start so that the boss just doesn't even hit you. So I'd say this is probably just best in slot. Probably rival that of a scythe if not better just because you take no damage. Okay, it's been an hour actually. Sweet. Okay, we managed to get 86 kills an hour. Which is, I think, about 10 kills more an hour than uh, what I normally do with melee. So it's Right up there, it's quite up there. A bit more costly though, because of the runes, right? Melee, you don't use any charges, but damn, it is uh, quite a bit faster. So, so nice. The next place is Dagonoth Kings, specifically Dagonoth Rex. I was getting like 20 to 30 second kills on average with Shadow at Rex, super freaking good. I was getting about 60 kills an hour alternating between the Slayer Room and the Normal Room. You can probably get up to 30 kills an hour. If you just stay in one room the whole time so it's quite a bit faster than everything else and you probably could shadow like something like prime but it's definitely not that great there's much better weapons like t-bow and blowpipe those are still much much better and of course melee uh, supreme is still better so i don't recommend shadowing the other two you most likely have better stuff for those two but definitely shadow rex if you don't think supply cost is an issue for you Oh, I got it. Hey, going straight into uh, Armadale with a Shadow, man. That's going to be interesting, learning how to do it. All right, guys, it's time to talk about Shadow God Wars. So it's amazing, amazing at all four God Wars, if you know the strats for each of them. And it turns them into essentially a walk in the park. I was able to do Armadale with my whole task in one trip on my first try, and I could have stayed for like an extra hour or two if I wanted to. I just didn't feel like it, right? But anyways, let me talk about armadillo a lot of people are like ah you can't use shadow there because you know you're wearing paper you're gonna take a lot of damage from minions well you are right if you don't know how to do it properly if you do know how to do it properly it's very chill so i'll show you how just copy what i do in this clip so you want to start your character under the boss this is why i prefer when the boss spawns i quickly go for a hit and then i go back under the boss because after that the minions will spawn so then i see the melee guy spawn i freeze the melee guy i stop him from hitting me and then all i do after that is i hit the boss once i go under because the shadow is a slow weapon right the boss hits really often so i'm stopping him from hitting me so when the cooldown is about to wear off i pop another hit and then i go into the boss again i wait for the cooldown to get close to finishing i pop another hit go back in and if you don't kill it by the time the freeze gets worn off by the mega guy, all you gotta do is freeze the mega guy again, and then you just hit the boss, go under, hit the boss, go under. And yeah, it's really simple on Taz. You can easily do armor down under a minute every single time with the shadow. It's so, so way better than a T, but way better than even chinning if you know how to do this like I am. Wow, actually, yeah, finishing an armor down task only takes about two hours. So the next boss I'm going to talk about is Zamar God Wars. So Zami boss, the shadow just destroys it, especially if you're on task. I do recommend being on task since it's easy to get. And there are probably some really, really overpowered kiting methods where the boss just never touches you. But I'm not a fan of doing those methods. And I honestly don't think you really need to because I just came up with a method on the spot that seemed to work really, really well. So if you want to copy mine, you totally can. I just stand by the altar. And when the boss spawns, I try to freeze it. And if I don't get the freeze early, then I just run along the wall to the south. And that'll give me some time and distance to try to freeze it again. So I essentially follow the wall to that direction and then further uh, west if I have to to freeze the boss. Usually I'll land the freeze like within three tries. And then you just pummel the boss from a distance. And if the boss unfreezes, it's okay. You let it get closer to you. You freeze it again. You follow along the wall that way. And you should have no problem killing it before you take a lot of damage. I didn't really talk too much about minion management, but it's honestly all the same for every four God Wars bosses. You just want to stack the melee and the ranger together and you just blood barrage off of them. If you want, you can ice barrage them and then move away so that it's even easier for you to heal if you're not uh, comfortable with prayer flicking. And then you just shadow the mage guy last. The next boss I want to talk about is at Sarah. Shadow is definitely super strong at Sarah as well. It's better than Tebow if I remember. And it definitely shows because, yeah, I just kill it super fast. Anywhere from 20 to 20 seconds to about a minute or so. And the method is really straightforward. Same as range method. You just run in a circle. No freezing needed. So just do as you normally do. 
I do recommend being as accurate as you possibly can, so bring a Sears ring, and if you want, you can have the Light Bearer on the side when you're killing minions, so that you can get your spec back for whatever purposes, whether it's Eldritch or anything that involves healing. Next boss I want to talk about is the Bandos boss, and it's very similar to the Zami strat. You just want to freeze it from a good spot. You can just copy what I do. It works pretty well. And yeah, just hug along the wall, gain distance, so you can attack it far away. And when it unfreezes, by the time it gets close to you, you can probably freeze it again. And if again, it doesn't freeze, you can just keep running along the wall until it does. But usually you can kill it anywhere from one to two freezes with the shadow using my gear. And yeah, that's about it. Honestly, there's really nothing that will come close to the shadow at Bandos. Like not even melee. I guess scythe, but you know, that's for experienced Bandos goers. Uh, range won't even come close to the shout, that's for sure. But yeah, shout BIS, let's go. Next boss I want to cover is actually Kelfight Queen, one of the original bosses of RuneScape. And this boss, normally you actually melee the first phase and then you range the second phase, but the shadow is like, I don't care, dude. I'm just so strong and accurate that it doesn't matter. I'm just going to kill this boss and that's exactly what the shadow does it just annihilates the boss regardless of its form now you might be thinking whoa 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 kill fight queen it's got like prey mage and stuff too on the first phase how is that possible well actually these prayers are fake they just signify that that its resistance to those styles are higher but the shadow especially on task is just so accurate it doesn't matter i would argue just maging kill fight queen alone is Probably close to the best of the best possible kill solution just because you have more space for food so you don't have to bank as often and also you can bring vengeance and thralls super smoothly in incorporated into your fight as well so you can stack a lot of vengeance and have thrall uh, dps going with you while volatile specking and shadowing as your main weapon the dps is insane just off of that combination but melee might still theoretically be better on the first phase. But definitely Shadow BIS in second phase though. I also decided to test the mole just because my friends asked me to try it out. And it actually was quite good. It matched pretty much my Twisted Bow kills per hour with Amethyst Arrows. Although I'd say definitely stick with range because it's a lot cheaper for the same amount of kills per hour. But hey, if you have a Shadow and you don't have a T-Bow, then yeah, the Shadow is definitely your go-to. They're about the same. I was able to get close to 80 kills an hour with a shadow at mole, so you're not going to get too much faster than this, I reckon. And that's all the coverage that I got with the shadow. Over 10 plus bosses, a very extensive test indeed, and insanely good positive testing results on pretty much everything but like Zuck. So yeah, it is absolutely amazing weapon. Definitely buy it if you have the money, because it covers so many different bosses and monsters as you can see. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. It was packed full of discoveries and also a lot of collection law PVM progress. So I hope you guys enjoyed that as well on the iron bar side of things. If you did enjoy both fronts, definitely let me know by liking this video, okay? Because it took a long time to make. But other than that, I hope to see you guys soon with another prize video and some more interesting videos to come. I got some big, big videos coming up soon at the end of this year and the start of next year. So look forward to it.